Oh, it's Monday, March 26th, and it's time, 2012, and it's time for Comments X. Well, uh, today was, yes, well, the weekend was pretty interesting. Uh, I ended up uh, watching uh, Cassandra's uh, videos and... Uh, Every once in a while, I, I get I get her tweets at I think around four or five o'clock in the morning. I get some of her tweets, uh, them, and I think uh, I think it was at that time. I can't remember when I saw her tweet that she was wishing her day would be over with quickly, the work day. And I commented that uh, when you begin feeling that if if you're working almost seven days a week uh, and that happens a lot of times when you're working for yourself uh, and that's what sort of freelance contracting does is you're more or less working for yourself and uh, because you don't have a steady income it's really hard to sort of if you're a good worker to take time off and so you wind up even though maybe something you're doing something you like uh, it's hard to take time off and you do get tired from it and at some point in time, you get this to this point where you start wishing the day would be over quicker, and it's uh, that's a harder day. If if you're at the beginning of the day wishing the day was already over or wanted to be a shorter day, then that day more often than not will be the longest day you've ever had. Uh, it just that, that's just sort of the way it goes. Is 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 how your day go? How your, the length of your day depends on how what your perception is of that day. If you're in the mood that you really are more irritated by that day, then the day's gonna take longer. If you're not irritated that, that by that, that by uh, not in an irritated mood, uh, uh, and that's this is typically due to fatigue, then uh, the day will go faster. So uh, for us, for human beings, uh, time is a matter of perception. It's not necessarily whether time speeds up or slows down. It is simply a matter of perception. And if you get to that point, <coughs> one of the things you have to learn how to do is take something known as micro or mini vacations. These are vacations... <coughs> like normally, you could take two weeks off and, and go someplace and have some fun. Uh, most people who work have the weekends to take off and enjoy. Uh, if you work for yourself, that is more often not more often than not not the case. You do not don't have the weekends to yourselves to yourself, and you don't get the two weeks holidays. So what you have to do instead is create these micro or mini vacations that in some cases will even last hours. They're, they're, they're hour long, hour, two hour long vacations or something like that where it's, you're doing something that sort of, I don't know, one helps you relax and then two, uh, because you, you, the other thing is you need to, in order to, in order to re reduce the fatigue, you have to relax, in order to really, you know, sort of sleep. Do to, to So, in many cases, your your mini vacations, you see, are going to be something known as sleep vacations, where all you're going to do is is you're going to get a little extra, a little couple, of, a couple of extra hours of sleep, uh, and then there could be things like you know doing something you'll you know doing something like but different than what you do for work so let's say uh what you do for work well although your hobby you're doing it for work now you want to have another hobby that's sort of in a different direction uh or distinctly different from the hobby you're doing for work. So you do the hobby for work, 
you do it while you're doing uh, w during work hours, and then if you have a hobby that, you, that that you're not doing during work, you go completely in the opposite direction. You do that hobby while you're not working. And that that sort of the non-work hobby uh, is your mini vacation. That's your your sort of your 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 uh, uh, called foot off the gas type of thing. Uh, that's your your neutral, and this is kind of what I do. I I have uh, a lot of my work is very technical. I do the news a lot. I do those almost every night, except for uh, uh, basically from Mondays to Thursdays. Uh, the weekend is I have to do a lot of extra researching and uh, so and. and catching up on my sources and then there's also the, you know the physics there, there's a whole variety of stuff that I have to do so I need something in the opposite end and for me this is uh, I like cooking I like sewing uh, I watch uh, I have with me uh, and and she's mentioned this is that uh, she works all the time on the on the, on the video and then there's nothing else there and She's just working, 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 and there's no sort of distraction from that. I have a continuous distraction. This is how I learned how to do the real micro, uh, the, the really, really micro, the, the really, really s small micro vacations. Is uh, I have a TV by each of my workstations, and I have the kids' channels on. What I call with, with, with cartoons, something really light, nothing heavy. Uh, on all the time, and that's m sort of my distraction. And I, I, you know, I started doing that even in, in, during undergrad. I got into watching uh, Sailor Moon uh, while I was doing calculus, and I started liking that type of that type of anime. I, I, I've, I have watched the other animes like Naruto and uh, Inuyasha and other anime like that, but uh, they're 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 too serious. And so I wanted something that was light and fluffy. So uh, my things were like Kid ne Kids Next Door, uh, Johnny Test, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, uh, Fairly Odd Parents, and then of course the, you know the stuff like Art Carly, Victorious, and uh, Zoe 101. All those, all those shows. Those are the shows that I typically watch now. Uh, and it's, it's not that it's not that they're that, you know they're serious, but that, and that's the thing is that, that is I watch them because they're not serious in terms of supposedly these new drama these dramatic shows. But I, I, I've watched these dramatic adult shows that are supposed to be so much more mature. And people ask me, well, why do I watch these kids? They're so immature. Well, most of the adult sh shows, I'm sorry, are not more mature than the kids shows. They just have more tits and ass and stuff like that. And uh, that's not appeal. You know, I don't care. I don't want to watch TV for that. I don't really care about that stuff too much. Uh, I'm not a sexually oriented person, so it's neither here nor there for me. So uh, I prefer watching the kids. The kids stuff, as I said, I don't find the kids stuff. Uh, that much more immature than what you see on the adult show. Most of the adult shows, uh, I can within five minutes I can start picking up flaws within the show in terms of not only incorrect plotting, incorrect plots and sort of, but things that are so unrealistic that they just wouldn't happen in real life. And if these shows are supposed to be mature and represent real life, then well they've done a bad job at it. And if their shows are supposed to be historical, a lot of these, you know, they're supposed to be these historical fiction things, and they're supposed to be, tr you know, near true to life. And I find most of those shows laughable because if you understand what's going on behind the scenes, and you've sort of peeking behind it, 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 done the geojournalism the way I've done the geo, uh, the uh, uh, geopolitical journalism the way I've done it, uh, then you know most of the stuff you're watching is nothing more than PR propaganda. It's some group uh, who's influenced the show, and they're trying to give you. They're trying to tell you why you should believe the way they should believe, and that's true. But uh, West Wing was the same thing. West Wing was a 
a, a political it was was political puppetry. It was propaganda. Uh, as popular as it was, as propaganda. Same thing with 30 Rock. 30 Rock is propaganda. Uh, SNL became propaganda. Uh, what else is it? Pro you know, John Stewart, uh, Stephen Colbert. Any of these shows that talk about uh, how they're apolitical or uh, are making fun of or, or, of these different political groups, different political groups aren't telling you the truth because there's a lot of politics behind these shows. These shows aren't purely and esoterically apolitical. They're there for political reasons. And to come across as if that they're apolitical or, or and, and all they're doing is mocking, there's no satire there because uh, they're not bringing up any truth to this behind their jokes. There's no truth behind their jokes. Uh, most of it is just sheer bullshit uh, that they're doing. So I don't find uh, their work to be on the level like you would find on Black Adder or of the old Monty Python uh, or any of the shows. The you know the, 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 these these are the older British shows. I mean, one of the one of the satirical shows that I loved a lot and it's no longer on was this show from BBC called Yes Minister and then Yes Prime Minister. These were real political satire, and you could see what was going on in the show, even though it was done comically actually happening in real life even if you understood what was going on behind the scenes you could say yeah this was this show this is how you know it, it good satire has something real behind it. and this is why uh you really couldn't get you you everyone's everyone is sort of trying to be like the norman lear uh and have uh the shows like mash to have the shows like uh uh good times or uh Uh, what's the other show called? Uh, uh. There was another show, I can't remember where, where, where it was, uh, uh, with R.G. Bunker. I can't remember the name of the show right now. It's just, I just lost it. But it started, uh, the, the characters of Archie Bun Bunker, and he was living with his wife, and, uh, his daughter and son-in-law moved into the same house. Uh, and of course, the daughter and son-in-law were of the hippie generation, and he was of the older fifty generation. And a lot of the satire that occurred in there, and a lot of the comedy, was so real that you could sort of, you know, really uh, uh, get a sense for what was going on. And the characters weren't stereotypical; they weren't, and they, in other ways, they weren't stereotypical. They weren't done in a mocking way. The characters themselves, in terms of how they were played, were played very seriously. But the way they were played, the manner, manner in which they were played, how these characters seriously, who were seriously played, interacted together, that provided the comedy. That's what the situation comedy is. The comedy arises from the situation. And they really knew how to pull it off. It wasn't formulaic the way it is now. And so, as I said, the quality of TV that we come out today is very poor. You know, there's there's almost no value to it at all. Uh, it's it's basically it's basically a call it corporate crap. So, you know, no matter what your political view is, is you're being sold corporate crap. Uh, if you don't believe me, go ahead and try to download it for free. And tell the uh, CBS executives or, or any of these uh, their, their lawyers who protect these copyrights that you're getting it for free, and you're and you're giving it away for free, and see what happens to you. Uh, and then tell me if you if if, if this is corporate crap or not. Uh, beyond that, uh, I watched. Uh, this is you know. So Cassandra has to has to before I move on to the next thing and sort of segue into the next bit. Uh, I have to go back and finish my thought on Cassandra, because that's one of the problems I have. Is I have a I have a tendency to go off on a tangent, forget what I was initially talking about, and just sort of keep going. So I remember this time we were talking about Cassandra and her micro vacations. So Cassandra has to learn how to do something like that on a daily basis as she's working. Uh, have some degree of have some degree of constant distraction going on that she can pull herself away. Uh, every 15, 20 minutes and just sort of 
you know, even if it's even if the distraction is audio only, like she's sort of you know, doing her work and she hears the stuff off to the side. Because uh, basically, what it is is that if my computer screen is here, right, my TV is either up to the left, off to the side, or off, you know, or off to the right. That that's the way it is, and that's the way I have things set up so that uh, I have these continuous distractions going on. And this provides me with a, with a large chunk of what's called my mini vacations, and it may, it really backs off a lot of the stress that I have, and allows me to actually to push to do more work, and actually I get, I get more work done, because uh, I f I don't feel as stressed as I did, or I, I used to feel when I wasn't doing this. And so I think if Cassandra does the same thing, that she'll find a lot of the stress coming off. And she'll have a much more enjoyable time than she would if uh, she wasn't doing that. Uh, and then, along the lines of the, the corporate crap, I was watching this uh, this uh, uh, kiss on uh, 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 It was our our our, uh, our consigned uh, government consigned uh, Nickelodeon. This is what happens up in Canada. Up in Canada. Uh, all of our TV shows are consigned by the government to the they're regulated to particular stations so YTV TV has primarily Nickelodeon and this is, what, this is what, what the Canadian government does is that all the provinces have to be equal and so it, there's no competition is not allowed in the media in, in the media sphere competition is not allowed they but what Canada does is they set up regional monopolies so Western Canada has a, uh, a media monopoly Central Canada has a media, no media monopoly, that's basically Quebec and Ontario, and then Eastern Canada has uh, a regional monopoly as well. And what happens is shows are given out, they're bought and paid for by the government, and then given out equally to all of these different media monopolies who then spread them out and pretend that they have a uh, hundred or so different channels where if you really go back and you sort of peek behind the hood you'll find out all these different channels are basically one media monopoly uh, with all the shows sort of uh, evenly doled out and where Nickelodeon comes in, Nickelodeon more often than not is given to uh, uh, YTV and you have uh, Cartoon Network it usually ends up on Teletoon and uh, Family Channel is where Disney ends up. And again, they're all given out by the government. This is all handled by the government. Uh, there's no real private involvement in this. Uh, so you have a few rich people who control everything, and then everyone else pays down the line. And, and this is sort of if you're a properly behaving citizen and you know accept the government orders and so on and so forth. But I'm not really like that. I'm more of an independent. Uh, so, but anyways, uh, this show uh, on the Kids Channel, they do this every once in a while, they've been doing this for a long time now, is, uh, is about this whole thing of inclusion. And they did uh, Sydney White, it was with Amanda Bynes, uh, who was a former Nickelodeon star, and she plays this, it was supposed to be this thing of on Snow White, and this is what Sydney White is, it was, but it wasn't really a Snow White. It was, but it was was a uh, a remake of uh, what you call it, of Revenge of the Nerds. If you go back to the 1980s, there's this movie called Revenge of the Nerds, and this the Sydney White was a remake of that. That's what it primarily was. And what it was throughout the most of the movie was. <laughs> this is what, you know, looking back at it, Revenge of the World, Re Revenge of the Nerds was a very whiny music, a whiny movie uh, about why nerds, nerds are treated so so badly or so poorly. Why, why aren't they included in everything else? They're just like everybody else. And you know what? And, and, and they brought this up again because they're now talking about cyberbullying and stuff like that. You know what? I got, I've gotten to the point that is that I don't care about inclusion anymore. I mean, I'm a nerd. I'm a geek. Who cares? 
you know, I'm gonna do what I want to do regardless of anyone, uh, with, regardless of whether anyone anyone approves of it, approves of it or not. You know, I don't care what anyone else thinks about me. I wear what I want to wear. I don't wear things because it means certain things. People, you know, say, "Oh, you can't wear that color. You know what it means." And then, you know, they talk about, you know, this. Th their in intonation is that they, if you wear certain colors, that it has a Freudian um, implication behind it. And, th and for me, th I wear colors because the colors make me happy. I like colors, and that's the only reason why I wear the colors. You know, I don't care what somebody else thinks of it. I care what I think, and I wear what makes me happy, and that's just, that's the way I dress. Uh, I'm in my office more often than not on the computer, so this is the way I dress. Uh, you know, who am I gonna dress to impress? W you know, when I'm in the office all the time, or in my in my library studying all the time. You know, that's the, these are my library clothes. So it, the, the, for me, there's no need to impress anyone. I don't care about impressing anybody. Uh, and if you don't like me because I'm not trying to impress you, then too bad. Uh, that's the way things are. But <laughs> this wasn't necessarily Sidney White's movie. Sidney White was in <laughs> it was this whole and this uh, this sort of scene it's this whole thing now where these pretty white girls get up and complain how they didn't win Beauty Queen. And at the end of the show, everything turns out wonderful. They get the Prince Charming, and they get the the, the crown beauty queen, and everything's all right with the world. Well, that's not the way things usually turn out, is that uh, if you're a geek, uh, things don't necessarily turn out all right because someone gives you something. It turns out all right because you accept the situation the way it is, and then you work from there. And that's the that's the extent of it. Uh, and so you know, uh, if if you're a geek, if you're a nerd, and you're sh you know, because I s still see they're doing the cyberbullying, the kids are still hanging themselves. You know, if you're a geek and a nerd, you know, don't wait for someone to come around and like you. You know, you need to get up and do things yourself, and be your own person. People who people who are the average person, if you look at the average society. They're terrified to be themselves because they're always afraid of what other people are going to think about how they dress, how they, you know, how they look, or this and that. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Th these people don't go home any happier than they would than they than they left. So if it if if at the end of the day, you can't be happier because you're fitting in with a particular crowd, then. Fitting with a, in a particular fitting in with a particular crowd doesn't matter at the end of the day, and so you need to really sort of work on being your own person, being happy with who you are. And once you start doing that, then it's not going to matter what anyone else says about you. Uh, it doesn't matter what they write below if they're, if they're a hater or whatever. These people don't matter, and I think most people who are haters have their own issues anyway. So. And I said, this was sort of my beef. I was I was watching Sydney White. It was a pretty good show, you know. I said it was. It just, at times, it you know the way they presented it. It could have you know it could it could have been a better a better movie and and, and it, they sort of glossed over things too quickly and they focused too much on. Um, this sort of whiny aspect of things, but it was what it was, and you know, for the, for the amount of time it killed, uh, that was good too. <laughs> you know, it was, it was primarily a time killer. So, anyways, uh, I'm gonna get started with my day today. It's another day. I'm gonna be. Um, there's gonna be the news tonight, so I will see you tonight for the news. Uh, I hope to have. Uh, I'm going to try to build a wider audience. Uh, they're still trying to push the war for Syria, and they're still trying to push the war for Iran, but it looks like there are some new peace groups coming up on both the Israeli and the Iranian side that I'm going to try to work with and see whether or not we can start building more of an audience that will sort, you know, uh, 
try to sort of really deal with with these. You can't. Un, it, it, and here's the thing: you can't use humanitarian phrases and saying you're going to be humanitarian uh, and solve war problems by going and creating more war. In other words, you got somebody who's oppressing somebody else. You can't go in and bomb the crap out of them and say you're doing it for humanitarian reasons. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. I mean, I I anyone who hear, hear, if you hear the phrase that we have to bomb these people for their own good to protect them from their government, you, 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 if you believe this, you're an idiot. Bombing these people has nothing to do with humanitarian reasons. Bombing them has to do with strategic in military reasons. So, as I said, uh, we're going to try to work on this tonight. Uh, we'll see how things go. Uh, I've got other work to do during the day, and I'm also going to try to get more cleaning done. That's on the agenda, not more cleaning, because I can. I've been able to adjust my workload, and I'm now used to my workload enough that I can actually get some cleaning in. All right, I'll see you later on during the day.